Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical, transformational journey. Welcome back to the Inspired Action Podcast. My name is Jay. This is pod 132, 132. And I'm here with my very happy, as always, <laughs> co-host, Lita Herman. Welcome back, Inspired Action Years. Today, we're continuing our season eight, diving deeper into the topic of the 13 ghost points, which really means today is about the theme of authenticity. Woohoo! If you remember in our last episode, we talked about freeing ourselves from the hooks that we get in life, from those negative traumatic experiences that kind of latch onto us and pull us away from our true selves. Yeah, episode 131. And we hope that since then, you've been noticing how those hooks show up in your own life. So you can start to release them. First, you have to see them. You have to be aware. Then you can start to release them and allow your true chi to flow freely into everything that you do, right? Yeah, exactly. And we explored what true chi is and why it's so important. We also discussed how to become aware of where in your life you might be living in what we like to call not true chi. So what what are the areas of your life where that's happening? And today we're going to dive deeper into these concepts. It sounds like a new TV show on like Lifetime. Not true, cheese. Yes, there you go. Right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay, and to help listeners understand that each one of the 13 ghost points represent a specific theme in our lives, that's what this podcast is going to be about, these little, these ones on the ghost points, showing us, well, showing the listeners, well, I, I guess... All of us. Auditorially showing the listeners a place where we can either align with our true nature or get out of sync with it. Yeah. And the first ghost point is all about your door to the world, essentially how you interface with the world around you. And today we're going to focus on how you can cultivate this door in a way that honors your true chi and expresses your true nature. Yeah, well, that just sounds so beautiful and so amazing. And we're going to try to pull it off. We will we'll see, right? <laughs> but before we continue on that wonderful thought, let's talk about what's happening in our little inspired action world. Okay, great. So many of you have probably heard that we've had a lot going on lately. We, yeah, we had an incredible retreat in Santa Fe with all our alchemy students this October. You know, it was, it was super amazing. It just seems like a blink ago, right? But yeah. it's only like almost a, a couple of weeks now. Yeah. yeah. And it was amazing. And we worked on a topic called the five spirits. Yeah. And I thought, Jay, it would be nice to explain briefly what the five spirits are because the work with them is so powerful. And we'll probably be doing another five spirit workshop in 2025. Just throwing it out there as a maybe. As a big maybe, yes. I do <laughs> find that understanding the five spirits, it's an incredibly helpful tool in my day-to-day -day life. And, you know, especially if I have a big idea or a big decision to make, I love using the five spirits. It's just now really even more in just present after that workshop. Yeah, me too. And the concept is that we don't have just one spirit. We have five spirits, one for each of the five elements. And these spirits, they they really help us make decisions in our lives. Yeah, they guide us in deciding which path to follow and what our true destiny is. And I'll say with that saying that, they also, if we don't utilize them, they, they're not present in our decisions. That's really true. And what we learned is that most of us are doing it all wrong. <laughs> well, we don't like that word here, right? So what's another word besides wrong? Because remember, no right, no wrong, no good, no bad, only good, right? It's, it's like we've been putting the cart before the horse. And, you know, the big mistake we see people making is trying to figure out how to do something before they've really figured out why they should yes, be doing it. Yes, yes, yes. Times 100, yes. And that's a really easy way to understand, to put it there. It's about your why, your purpose, and just take your time and make some decisions. Yeah, because if something is truly on your destiny path, it's your spirit's job to guide you there. Yeah, and often we second guess ourselves and then we don't really follow through or we're going down the path of, an idea, an idea, an idea, and, and then not really what we want to do, but we think it's what everyone else wants us to do. Or the opposite, you just keep going into how and you don't really look at like what that purpose is, yeah. that idea it's is. It's just a quagmire. Yeah. 
So that's a brief introduction to the five spirits. Wait, wait, wait. Why don't we at least tell the listeners what the five spirits are? We're talking about it. Okay. We're in a little segue here. Okay. Just don't take all day because we'll probably do something on it, maybe. All right. We've got a big podcast ahead, but just quickly... The fire spirit is kind of like the master spirit that guides us, and we call that the Shen. And the wood spirit is what we like to call the oracle, because it receives guidance from that Shen. And the metal spirit is called the Po, and it governs our instincts. And the earth spirit is called the Yi, and it helps us figure out that purpose and intent we keep talking about. And last but certainly not least is the water spirit, the Zhe, the Hao spirit, which is all about knowing how. Once you understand these five spirits, which Lita just whipped right through, which is great, you can see that they're designed to help you find your direction in life. And I know we all could use a little bit of that, right? Yeah. How about we do a special episode on the five spirits someday, Lita? That's a great idea. I will write that down. Yes. Well, why don't we <laughs> sleep on it, see if it's a good idea. There you go. We'll do our little process and then Get we'll make a decision. purpose and intent. That's right. Yes. All right. So what else is going on in the Inspired Action World, Lita? also known as the Alchemy Learning Center. (laughs) Well, there's our new podcast. If you haven't checked that out yet, it's called Five Element Fridays. Woohoo! Woohoo! And we share a quick five element concept for you on Fridays to take with you into the weekend, whether you're hanging out with friends, going to a party, or just observing people at the grocery store, or walking down the sidewalk. It's just a great way to start noticing how the five elements show up in your everyday life. And that's if you have nothing else to do on the weekend. <laughs> right. We will help you with the Five Element yes. Friday podcast. <laughs> yes. It also ties into our fun Five Element Fridays live event, which is in the Alchemy Learning Center for our members, also known as Alchemist in Training. Yes, right? there you AKA go. AKA Alchemist in Training. <laughs> so if you're an Alchemist in Training, come to the event on Fridays. Everyone can listen to the podcast, but only Alchemist in Training get Five Element Fridays or Meditation Mondays or access to our whole library of classes and webinars and seminars and interviews and meditations and so much more. So much more. Yes. So the Five Element Fridays happen at five o'clock Eastern time every other Friday. So, you know, we go over a lot of fun stuff. We do some watching of the walks in videos. We discuss many Five Element topics and we answer a lot of people's questions live and in person. So that's really cool. And we picked a time where people in Australia can come, people in the UK can come, like Hopefully everyone, roughly everyone around the world, I know it's not ideal for every single locale, but it's the closest we can get to people joining us from I know. everywhere and we live. Have people, some people far, far, far away saying they're just absolutely loving the replays. Yes. So if you're an Alchemist training membership person, you will get the replays as well. But if you want to join us, head over to the Alchemy Learning Center. Dot com. You can sign up for either the individual events or a monthly subscription. We're working on the individual thing. So if it's not up there yet, you will see that. You get like a little guest pass that you can purchase for a very tiny amount. Or you can just sign up for the monthly Alchemist and Trading package. Yes. Um, and we're still going to just say, you know, when we're in early bird pricing and there's no long-term commitment, you can stay as long as you like. Yes. I like that. Alchemist in training. Alchemist in training. It's exciting. Yes. All right. And it's much more, like we just said. It's just a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So come and join us. We're having a lot of fun. And we also want to say we have some amazing new teachers that are also helping us out. And we're very excited for everything in the Alchemy Learning Center. Everyone is coming in. Everyone we're meeting. Some people we don't even know. And it's been a lot of fun to get to know everyone. So... Yeah. I don't know. You get, we're expanding. We're, we're growing. Expanding, we're yes. growing. And it's all about your alchemy journey of self cultivation. That's right. what we're here to talk about. Self cultivation. <laughs> also, if you had a moment to, if you liked any moment of any one of these podcasts, please rate and review on Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I don't know. Figure it out and just say yay or a <laughs> couple stars or whatever. I don't know. I Anything. Guess more than a few couple Anything stars. Anything will help us out because yeah. that helps the little algorithms find us out there. Yes, all over the world. No, our, the algorithms find other people out there. Yeah. They don't go out and find us. Well, they help you find us. There we go. There you go. Okay. And it helps other people like you because they already found us if you're listening. That's true. That's true. <laughs> right? Let's get into that quagmire yes. of algorithms. Oh, my But gosh. please, just if you can, that would be really good for us and for you and for all of us. So... 
<sighs> That's it. Let's get back to our podcast. I forgot what we were even talking about because there was so many going on. Yeah, that was a lot. We're talking about the door. Yes. Yeah, so let's get back to the ghost point and all about your door. Well, yeah. not your door exactly, like the door right here into the podcast studio in the world headquarters of the Alchemy Learning Center <laughs> and Inspired Action Podcast, but in the your door in relationship to the 13 ghost points. Okay. So we want to talk about these ghost point themes in your life. And the first theme is this door. It's about how you interact with the world around you in a way that's maybe hopefully true to you. Yeah, all the ghost points are about how you can be true to yourself, live your truest, most authentic you. And the starting place, at least with the ghost points, is to look at the door that you have. Everyone has a door. It's your door to you. It's yeah. coming inside to you. So yeah. we do a meditation with our students about what your door would look like. Everyone has a different vision and thought about what your door would look like. So maybe you can do the meditation afterwards if you want, but it's about the door, your door. Yes, you can uh, definitely think about that. And because the number one thing that usually gets funky whenever you've had a negative experience in life, a traumatic experience, it's often the way we then interact with the world. That's what gets affected right away. I mean, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, a bunch of girls, they decided not to speak to me in my school. And that was like a life-changing event for me in sixth grade. I remember it to this day. It felt very traumatic back then. Wow. That was like way back, like <laughs> one room schoolhouse. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the ancient Chinese philosophers say that when you're cast out from your society, which you were, yeah. granted it was just a lunchroom, yeah. but in school you were just cast out from your circle of friends. That's the worst thing that can happen to a human being because we're programmed to be communal as a species. I know a lot of people like to go rogue and drop out of the society and all that stuff, but we as a human as a race, as a species, we're communal. So when we're cast out, we feel like we're going to die somewhere alone in the woods. Yeah. That we didn't choose to be out yes. alone in the woods. Yes, but yes. It feels really bad, really I, bad. I remember, you know, during that time as a kid, you know, it was so traumatic eating lunch alone in the lunchroom. It was just devastating. Wow. In that one room schoolhouse? Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm joking. It yeah. had two rooms. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, one was a lunchroom, one was a school room. Right, right. All right, so let's use that traumatic experience that you had as an example for others later, because there could be someone out there right now eating lunch alone at work. Yes. Because they got shunned from their coworkers yeah. or their family. So you know, let's just use that as an example, because that is a very, you know, it does happen, and it might, you know, we look back on it, and it's not like the worst thing that ever could have happened to you, but it's really bad. It's pretty traumatic. Yeah. Okay, so let's use that as an example. Say you're living your best life. You're kind of that happy-go-lucky you, being entirely happy and authentic and just not even thinking about anything, care in the world, and then something negative happens. Often something to do with the people you're interacting with, maybe your parents of your friends or your family or your teachers or your relatives or your classmates, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we could do this based on something that physically scares you like an accident, but, you know, I like your example here. Well, we're, either way, yeah. something negative happens, something traumatic. And the question is, how did you react? What did you learn from this event and how did it change you some way? And so we're going to get into that door thing, but how did you react? Yeah. And it depends on who you are. We're going to talk about that today. You might already be a person who is shy and doesn't interact that easily in, in the outer world. So your reaction might be totally different from a different person who's really gregarious and interfacing with people all the time. I agree. And the severity of the incident might also cause it to be different for each person. Yeah. And if you think of the way you interact with the world and you think of yourself as having this door, how does that door normally operate? That's the question you want to ask yourself today. Like, is it wide open all the time where everyone is welcome to come in? Like, maybe you're always in the mode where you're like wanting to host a big party at your house. <laughs> I'm not sure how that would look at, but I'm sure there are some people like that. Or perhaps it's naturally closed and maybe even locked with a peephole with yeah. three locks in a peephole <laughs> because you're naturally quiet and like a lot of peace and peace and quiet. I'll tie that in. Yeah. Right. So you have all these little like security things and then you look out and yeah. And both are awesome if that's the natural way you interface with the world. And 
we certainly have no judgment that one is better than the other. Only we want to know what is your true door? Who do you need to be in the world? What often occurs when negative stuff happens in our lives is that we have to create a story to make sense, like to protect ourselves, to get through it. It's one of the nine houses of the heart kind of stories. Yeah. And in Chinese medicine, we would say that it's your heart protector's job to protect your heart with the nine palaces stories. They help you survive the difficult times. Yeah. So we'll go back to the bullied. You're being, you were basically bullied. Yes. Right. And so much of it's going on in the world right now. It's very, very like a huge topic. So let's just say you were bullied as a child. It's often extremely painful for the children who are bullied, and they don't really know how to process that. Yeah, and that's a good example because in order to survive that bullying, the heart protector really has to find a way to deal with hatred, I guess. You know, it's it's a form of hatred. And being ostracized from society or put into a place that is really not where you want to be. And your heart protector could come up with so many possible stories. I know. A lot of times I think children or people who are bullied, because adults are bullied as well, you might blame it on yourself, come up with all these reasons why you are bad, why it's your fault. You start to believe the bullies, and then you, you just change who you are because of this situation that's going on. Or you might be able to maintain your belief in yourself and then you gotta you have to blame something. So you blame the bullies with a lot of like anger inside, you internalize it, and maybe that even stays with you the rest of your life. Yeah, and these reactions, whatever the reaction is, it can become a story. And these stories can live on inside of you for the rest of your life. Like you have that story yeah. of my the childhood thing, sixth yeah. Sixth grade, yeah. And the ghost points are the themes that we can examine one at a time. And in this case, the story, it, it this story may have changed the way you interact with the world. Yeah, first we need to try to remember who we truly are before this happened. How would you have normally interacted with the world if you hadn't had that negative experience? So I want you to take a few minutes right now, hit pause, and just sit quietly for a little while. Hopefully you're not driving. But if you are, when you stop and think about what, if there's a specific episode in your life that you're thinking that comes to mind and just work on that and just sit quiet and see what the story is. Yeah, because what you were thinking of is how were you before that happened? You know, was, did you have that party door or were you the type who, you know, had that locked door? And then afterwards, what was the difference? Yeah, that door was closed and rarely open, but trauma blew the door off its hinges, and now you're feeling bombarded by the world all the time with no protection. This is one story that we've heard. Yeah, or maybe you were the party door person, but now it's locked and you've literally thrown away the key. And these are both extreme cases, but you can see that these metaphors could really apply to many people who've experienced trauma. Yeah, and the point of this right now, this podcast, is just a starting place, a place where you can start to... Look at your life, observe where you are, and how can you return to the true you? And we're going to use the ghost points yeah. through this. So we how- use a lot of things, but for, to this podcast, we're doing through the ghost points. Yeah. How can you unhook yourself from the story you've been telling yourself? Yeah. Some people can remember who they truly are. Some people can't. The trauma wasn't so young. They can remember the days when they were happy and being themselves, and then boom, something happens. They can almost say the last, the day, the time, the person, what they were wearing. A lot of times it's very focused. Yeah. And some sometimes people, it's a little fu- fuzzy and vague, yeah. but yeah. Some people can't remember when they felt normal. Right. So right. that's also a possibility. Yep. And that's a little harder. If you can't feel back to a day when you were just truly yourself, maybe the trauma was so young that you never really got to be yourself. Right. And that's unfortunate, but you can maybe, in that case, imagine who you truly are just by feeling into it. And remember, there's no one way to to go at it. We're just like suggesting this way yeah. as a starting point. And, you know, it, the first thing is to watch yourself, look back on your life, do it in a quiet place. And we can do this elementally because that's our jam, right? Yeah. We're really kind of good at the five elements. So we want you to start to get to recognize and understand and know your five elements stack up. We don't think it should be hidden. We think you should know that information and live it and feel it and breathe it. And so that's really a good point. So the question you could ask yourself based on your five elements is, do you think you interact with the world in a way that makes sense knowing who you are? 
So you are naturally maybe gregarious. That's a really funny word. Let's get a better word than that. Very outgoing. Uber social. Uber social. Yeah. But you don't necessarily drive an Uber. <laughs> right. But you're just exactly. really, they took that word, right? Yeah, right. It's just really social and out there. and Yes. Yeah. Or maybe you're just naturally really quiet and you really like people, but you prefer one-on-one with people. Yeah. And we'll even do a little bit of examples here. If you're the wood element or wood in the top there. You may be more naturally uh, wanting to engage with people. And it's your nature, your elemental nature, to want to perhaps take the lead. And at the same time, you like to be private, you know, maybe more so private at home. But you have that engagement with people that you seek out. Yeah, wood is young and interactive on the outside in the outer world. So that when they're, they're out in the world, the door is open and very interactive. But at the same time... They are yin on the inside, which means the door to wood person is not that wide open at all. Only people who are approved to come in are yes. allowed inside. Yes. And as a wood person, you can look at how you're engaging the world, how you're actually engaging with the world. Sometimes the world shuts down wood people when they get too big or too bold or too loud. And that could feel really bad. You know, the story that they might tell themselves might be that it's not safe to be the leader. It's not be safe to be big. It's not safe to be themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the question is, what would it take for you to be free to be really big in the world again? How can you feel safe leading people or being assertive again? Because in all these cases, you need to step up for the rest of us. Yeah, we need the wood energy out in the world, right? Yeah. To get that bleep done. And remember, everyone has wood somewhere in their stack up. So it's not just like big wood. Yeah. You have wood somewhere. Yeah. And remember, opening your door doesn't mean you have to let everyone in. That's not your nature either. It just means you have to let yourself out. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's great, right? That's perfect yeah. for wood. And again, they are a little bit private at home, so it might... You know, take a little while to understand how your door as a wood person or wood in the top one or two works. And so that's fantastic. So let's talk about fire. Fire! Fire. (laughs) If you're fire, you're naturally more socially outgoing and your focus is on people. So it's your nature to want to be around people, to have that open door. Yeah, parties, dancing, singing, making love. I do you want to let everyone in. I'm just saying that door's open. Come on in. The disco ball's going. It's much more open door than other elements. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. All right. Well, fire is young. (laughs) No worry. No nothing on that, right? Get a little hot. Get hot in here. All right. Fire is young and interactive on the outside. And it's also young and interactive on the inside. I'm just saying. So wanting to love everyone if possible. I'm just saying. Not necessarily the way Jay was insinuating. I'm just, I was just <laughs> saying. It's a possibility of listing of how you'd have your door. Okay. So as a, And it's a metaphor. Yes. All right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So as a fire person, you can look at whether you're feeling safe enough to be that open-hearted social, super social, uber social person, right? When people are mean to you, it can shut your fire down and then you can be afraid to open that door again. The story you can tell yourself might be that it's not safe to be light and love or just pure love or love in the world. It's not safe to be your beautiful self. We always compare fire to a blooming flower, which is actually quite delicate, even though it is so out in the world. Yeah, it always takes chances. It's vulnerable. Yeah. And the real question here is, what would it take for you to be free, to be light and love in the world again if it's shut down? How can you feel safe to be beautiful and give love back to others without worrying about what's coming back to you? And remember, everyone has fire. We're going to probably say that for all elements. Everyone has fire in there somewhere. Yeah. And in the fire case, we need to bring your loving perspective out in the world. We all need it. We all need that fire energy. Fire. That energy in the world to help. The rest of us remember that love really does make the world go round. Yeah, that's so sweet. And remember, opening your door feels so much better when you're letting the light and love out than trying to get love to come in. Oh, that's really, really big. Yeah. Yeah, When you're always looking for love, you forget that you're really here to give love. Yeah. That's wonderful and awesome and fantastic. All right, let's move on to Earth. The Earth door is naturally very social. 
but also somewhat quiet on the outside and the inside. They're both yin and yang in both ways. Yeah, and they're more fluid, right? So then yeah. what would that look like? Well, they're patient with people. They're not very assertive necessarily, but they are engaged because they like to talk and they like to listen. They listen a lot and they talk a lot and they really care about people. Yeah, especially on the inside, at home, caring about family, choosing family events over big ruckus social parties with those fire people, <laughs> and even choosing time alone, being with yourself, engaging with yourself, having a thought process, which they love, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. And what happens for Earth, it's not so much that the door shuts down too much or opens up too much. It's it's often that the stories they tell themselves, these heart protector stories, might be making them feel like a victim perhaps, or you know, their interaction with the world might reflect that feeling. Or maybe the stories make them feel resentful almost in an earth kind of way, like resentful, and that's in, in affecting their interactions negatively. Yeah, and often earth can tend to put up with negative situations for a very long time. But in a way that's really painful and causes them to feel like even stuck. Yeah, and I think sometimes they bury it or they just don't kind of deal with it in the moment. And it's not so much they shut down, but they it's that that they feel shut down and continue to try to operate as if things are normal. Yeah. It's like they push it away for the time. Yeah. And so the door may appear the same the way they interface with people, but the feelings they have are so different after some kind of negative intense, you know, trauma or negative event, they have so much more intensity. And so the process of healing for Earth might be about grappling with the truth of the situation and facing the fact that they may need to change their relationships. So it's very hard for Earth to make radical changes. It can sometimes take years of putting up with a negative situation before they make a change. Yeah. So the real question to ask if you're in Earth first or on the top there, how do you feel about your interactions with other people? And are your emotions causing you to be less caring than you'd normally be? Because remember, you're the element of caring. So if resentment is taking over... Or maybe your emotions have made you feel like a victim... And that's impacting your inability to speak up for yourself. Almost like being in danger of people stepping on you like a doormat. Yes, yes. And I think the Earth's gift to the world is that deep caring that comes from incredible mindfulness. You know, that means that Earth naturally sets boundaries at the same time as being very caring and very nurturing. It's a delicate balance. And the trauma that can cause that to go out of balance is what we're talking about here today. And working with that door, with your door as an earth person, is about is about that balance. It's about can you set that balance? Is the balance set already? We don't we don't know where that trauma has happened. Get, can you both be caring and set boundaries, firm boundaries with all the people in your life? Right? Yeah, that's perfect. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's good. But Earth people are up for it. Yeah, they're they up are for totally it. up for it. Yeah. And so it's really about facing. Some things that maybe you didn't want to face, and that's why the door doesn't feel right. They're just not going away. Yeah, and your your interfacing with the world got changed because of it. Yeah, and it's probably exhausting you on many levels. That can be very common. Yeah. So, All right, so let's go on to metal, 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 metal. Well, if you're metal, you can naturally hang back more in the world. That's normal. And I, I like to think of the door for a metal person as like almost like transparent because they love to watch the world, but they don't necessarily want to engage it all the time. I think that would be called a glass door. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> or maybe plexiglass. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that transparent is like, you know, clear. Yes. But not made out of metal. That would be like more of a mirror. Yes. Um, and your door would naturally only let a few people in at a time. They don't want to crowd that space. Maybe even only one person at a time. You know, let's keep it. Yeah, Quiet and metal, orderly. Metal loves one-on-one, yeah, socially. That's their social jam, right? Yeah. And metal people actually really enjoy just being with people in a quiet way. You know, mostly people who are authentic in themselves, that's who they prefer. And when trauma has happened in their lives, they can get a bit cynical about people. And that can really shut them down, either in their ability to open their door at all, or just in their negative view of people. And the more they shut down, the less likely they can excel out in the world. 
and they often have a lot to give the rest of us. We need those medals to show up because they're the ones who serve or are in service to the rest of us in a very respectful way. They do the jobs that require dedication and integrity. Yeah. And when they've been harmed in any way, they can become hermits and hide away, and they can give up on humanity and their gifts. And they can sometimes even become cantankerous because they they kind of lose hope for, about the goodness of all people. And this is a form of shutting the door as well. Like even, even if they're out in the world and they, they feel very pessimistic about people, that's kind of a door shutting as well. So metals, you know, they're naturally yin, quiet on the outside, but they're very young, strong on the inside. And while their door doesn't need to be open all the time, and they certainly need their quiet, they are very strong and and love to be involved with the world. Yeah, and if they withhold themselves when the integrity and the honor that we all need as a society is being withheld, the question you need to ask yourself if your medal is how can you restore your desire to be that in the world after you've been hurt or in trauma or even a victim? Yeah, how can you heal when you've seen the wrongs while still standing in your own integrity? Yeah, we need that integrity. Yeah. We need that honor. Yeah. We need so, that. So when you think about your door, if you're metal, how do you get back to that? How do you get back to wanting to go out in the world in that integrous way without a lot of like bitterness and yeah. things like that? That looks great. That sounds good. So all right, we're going to go on to water, 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 water. Well, water as usual is the hardest to explain in terms of the outward door because water is the most varied of all the elements, as we know. Some waters are quiet, and then they have spurts of outward expression where they blurt things out. Other waters might be babbling brooks all the time, and the expression might be constant, this constant flow of verbal words and things like that, even if they feel quite shy. So we say they're yin on the outside and yin on the inside, but sometimes this makes them quite powerful and intense and even ambitious in the world. So it's confusing. And when trauma happens, fear is one of those biggest things that can affect the way they are in the world. You yeah. know, it kind of shuts them down. And their doors can even become frozen in fear. Then they may really struggle with engaging the world in that natural, excited, bubbly way they used to feel. And if you're water, the world needs your gift of power and intensity to help move things forward in the world. And this is often the first thing that shuts down when you feel scared or hurt. And sometimes that means your door, which might have been quite easily open to the world in the past, suddenly gets 10 deadbolts on it and a peephole. Yeah, and it's frozen shut, right? Yeah. And for water, they have to be able to come back to that trust. That is the key word, trust to heal. Yeah, so the question, if your water is, can you trust that if you open your door again, that you're going to be safe? Yeah, and that's a big question, so take your time and think about that. Yeah. So, okay, Inspired Action is your homework, if you choose to accept it, the first step <laughs> is to see how you are living in your own life, how you're being in your own life, and can you try to see if that's really a comparison to who you think you are, if there's a discrepancy, if there's a big thing lacking. It might never even be remotely the same. If you can then maybe go and look out of memory and time when you were interacting with the other people according to your authentic self, and then boom, something happened. Yeah, and if you can't remember that time when your door was operating normally, you're going to have to rely on your imagination, what you think your true door should be like. I've asked people in sessions... You know, can you ever remember being happy? And sadly, people some people have said no. Yeah. So it's really, really hard. But then we still keep going back and we try to find something. And then you can ask yourself, what happened in your life to change that door? What was the cause of you not being your authentic self in that area, in that time, in that moment? And then how did it really start to affect you? And in terms of the way the ghost points work is they free yourself from past events. And while we like to do that with an actual ghost point treatment in our clinic. Um, These are technically issues that you can work with, anyone can work with for for themselves. Yes, it is a little bit of a DIY in the self-cultivation with the ghost points, although I really love the, you know, that you can go to a person and they'll do that with you, you know, but it is an amazing way to work on all the ways that negative life experiences impact us all at the same time. 
Yeah, because what we've learned from the points is that they they can be like a tangled web of issues that come from some kind of trauma and each point addresses one of those issues. So it might be easy for you to shift it because maybe it's only impacted one of these themes or it may be challenging because it's impacted all 13 themes of your life. So regardless, bringing awareness to the ways you are in your life, it's helpful for you to begin this process of healing. And today, like we said, it's about your interface to the world. Can you reframe the stories around why you're not being your true self when you're interacting with people? Or yourself. Yeah. Okay, interacting with yourself. Good point. And I think the healing, you know, often begins when you start to understand the stories you told yourself about these negative experiences and realizing there could be new ways to understand those stories. And now you can create some distance from those events, Yeah, you know, mentally, spiritually, and yeah. really start to heal. And, you know, the heart protector was the one who made those stories, but it can also be the one that helps you release yourself from it. Because once you remember that that was a survival mechanism story, then you can start to look at, you're not in survival mode, hopefully, at this time in your life. And it's it's when we try to make sense of all the bad that's happened in the world that we create these stories. And then when we look back on it, you know, maybe we can come up with a different way of looking at it. And I think, you know, for myself and for Lita, I think we both fundamentally believe that where you are is truly, truly okay, just the way you are, okay? You cannot be wrong or bad, and you certainly don't have to change who you are, but perhaps just entertaining the thought of how to figure out yourself, how to understand yourself. How to be yourself. How to be yourself and live that life of... Authenticity. Yeah, that's the whole idea of the ghost points. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. All right, that's it for today. We hope we, we brought this to you in an upbeat way. It can be a very heady topic. It can be a really serious topic. We're, we really talked about the positive aspects yes. of the ghost points, and we just touched on you know, the traumatic events. But this is a, a, a way for a lot of people to start to get interested and start to understand the journey of the 13 ghost points because it really is an amazing... Uh, ancient uh, pathway that we now can use in the modern world. Yeah, great. And next up, we're going to talk about connecting with your true trust in yourself. All right, so let's go open those doors out there and see what's out there and walk right through or let people in, let people out. I don't know, whatever you need to do All right. to be you. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast and you've reached the end. Woohoo! Woohoo. Why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at InspiredActionPodcast.com or Jay at InspiredActionPodcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening and remember to hug the dog. <laughs>